Hello, everybody. I'm Robert Breaker, and this will be our live stream for the week. Um, I'm a little under the weather. I don't feel great. I've had a, um, a fever for uh, now two days, I guess. And uh, it just feels like I've been walking around and I have been carrying 80 pounds on my back is what it feels like. Okay, my sound's working. And um, so I don't feel too good today, but I do have a guest with us. And I also, well, I wanted to do this. So I've been taking little naps today, trying to get better. My head hurts. I'm still not 100%, but I do believe that this is important, what we're going to talk about today. And uh, the Bible says, Jesus says, uh, well, of course, I think it's Paul that says it, but it says in the Bible that our strength is made perfect, or his strength is made perfect in our weakness. So when we're the weakest is sometimes when the Lord can work the most. So that's what I want to do today. I want to see the Lord work and move. And I hope that he will today and that you can see that. And uh, we've got a lot to get into today. We want to talk about the subject of what does it mean to just believe in Jesus? So many people that claim to be Christians run around and say, well, just believe in Jesus. What does that even mean? What does that mean to believe in Jesus? How come they don't explain what it means to believe in Jesus? So I'm going to bring up now Fabriel and add him here with us. Hey, Fabriel. Hey, brother. How you doing? How's it all doing? I'm Amen. getting there. Not so good, but hey, um, you know, what can you hey. do? I guess I can do all <laughs> things through a verse taken out of context. Amen. <laughs> uh, I guess I can. There you go. <laughs> but uh, that's my warm coffee, or my warm, not coffee. I don't drink coffee at night. My warm tea that'll yep. help me get through this today. And now huh, oh, it, no. just, it went all messed up on me. Let's see if I can fix the camera here. So there you go. Fine when the camera doesn't want to. Boy, I tell you what, we're not rich like those people on TV. I can't even get <laughs> focus right now. Yeah. Come on, focus me, bro. Come on. So maybe it'll show focus here. Oh, there you go. It fixes I don't have a lot of light here for some reason. So we're going to be talking today about the subject of what does it mean to just believe in Jesus? And I think a great place to start would be in the Word of God. And we'll start Amen. here with Acts chapter 20. Let me see. Do I have that in big so people can see it? Oh, I do now. Wow. Acts chapter 20, verse 24 through 28. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And now, behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Wherefore, I take you to rec record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. The Apostle Paul says, man, I know I told everybody what it is to be saved. Nobody has an excuse. Everyone I came in contact, I told them the gospel. And he says in verse 27, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. I just find that interesting. Um, some churches, they don't give you the all. They just give you some. Mm -hmm. I think we should give all, right? Yeah, Jesus gave all. Maybe we should give all the counsel of God. Amen. Then verse 28 says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. And it says, To feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his what? With his own blood. blood. So the purchase is the blood of Christ. That was the payment that he made. And that blood is important, isn't it, Fabriel? Yeah, man. It's a like of, uh, it's like someone buys something for you, right? And you say, well, you know, if I come up to you and say, hey, I just purchased these for you, brother. The obvious question that most people will ask is, well, well, what did it cost? How much did it cost? Right. So oh, how much did it cost, Jesus, for you to do that for me? Oh, my blood. The blood so right. when, we, uh, when we witness yeah. to people, we should talk about the blood. The blood is important. Yes, we sir. sing a hymn that is there's power in the blood. Well, is there really power in the blood? You and I have both seen lately a lot of people that claim to be Christians and they make their YouTube videos or they get on TV or they get on the radio and they poo poo the blood of Jesus. They don't talk about how important the blood is. A lot of times they omit it. They leave it out. And yet they like to use the term believe in Jesus. Now, there's nothing wrong with believing in Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. What does that mean? It needs to be explained. It's not enough to just say, hey, just believe in Jesus. You that's have to right. explain what does it mean to believe in Jesus. And that's the whole counsel of God. John 3.16 is probably one of the most well-known verses in the entire world. 
and it's quoted so much. And it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Oh, beautiful verse. But believe in him. What, is, what does it mean to believe in him? For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. So God wants us to be saved. Saved from what? From hell. He that believeth on him. What does it mean to believe on him? Why does it say believe in him? Believe on him. Is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Now it says to believe in the name. So what is it? Believe in him, believe on him, or believe in his name? Or is there more to it? This is still before Jesus died on the cross. So what does it actually mean to believe on Jesus? One of the best uh, verses, well, I like to use this when soul winning, but if all I, all I did was this, I don't think it'd be enough, but this is a good one. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So what does it mean to just simply believe in Jesus? Now, I'm going to give you real quick a little testimony. And I'm not here to insult people or put anyone down. So if you go to one of these churches, I'm not trying to put you down or insult your church or anything like that. All I'm doing is telling you that uh, this is my testimony of what I've seen firsthand. Yeah. And what I've seen firsthand in many churches is they're very quick to say, just believe in Jesus, just believe in Jesus. But they don't define what that even means. That's when I was right. a kid, my mom leaned more for the Pentecostals, and my dad was more toward an independent Baptist. Sometimes my mom would take me to her church. Other times dad would take me to his church. I remember a couple times as a kid, he took me to Peter Ruckman's church. And then other times he took me to independent Baptist churches. And, man, they were all over the place. Some of them were so legalistic, unfortunately. But not all independent Baptists are bad. There's still some good ones out there. Um, but you do find some, like I said, they're all over the place. And uh, some of them do not seem to preach the gospel in a way that people understand. And sometimes, well, most of the time, this is what I remember the most as a child. Mom would try to take me to her Pentecostal and I didn't want to go. Dad would take me to that. And so they just say, fine, and they'd settle. And mom and dad would go to church together to a Southern Baptist church. Now, not all Southern Baptist churches are bad, but a lot of Southern Baptist churches today are very liberal. And you can't be denied. Many of them aren't even King James only. And a lot of them will run to um, John 3.16. And is John 3.16, is that the gospel? Well, there's some elements of the gospel in it, but that's, that's right. not the gospel. And all that says is, well, just believe in Jesus. What does it mean to believe in Jesus? I want to share this verse with you. Because if all you tell somebody who's lost is, oh, just believe in Jesus, you might be confusing them. Because what are you telling them? What in their mind they're going believe in Jesus? Well, I think that means, and now they're making up in their mind what they think it means to believe in Jesus. Exactly. Just believe that there was a guy named Jesus that lived two thousand years ago. Well, I believe that. I use a calendar, and this is twenty twenty four from when he was born. So yeah, I believe he existed one day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so you're going to heaven because you believe he existed? Go ahead, That's right, brother Breaker. As a Roman Catholic, uh, I always believed in Jesus. I always believed in Jesus. Every single Roman Catholic out there believes in Jesus. Every single Roman Catholic out there acknowledges that Christ died for their sins, buried, rose again. Every, every, if you ask any Roman Catholic that, they'll tell you, oh, yeah, I believe in Jesus. So it's not just, and it is true to believe in Jesus, but we as soul winners have to take our time, right? Mm -hmm. Because we got to sit down with the person and hey, we got to lead them. We got to show them, okay, look what the Bible says here. 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 And the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing of the word of God. You know, and sometimes well, like, don't get ahead of us. Don't get ahead of us. Oh, sorry, brother. <laughs> You're I'm doing sorry, good. Brother. But you said it when you were a lost Catholic. You would, anyone came up to you and said, hey, do you believe in Jesus? You'd say, yeah. Well, then that means a lot of pastors would go, well, then you're a Christian. All right, brother. Hi. And you weren't yeah. a brother, were you? You were deceived because you were trusting in your works and not in exactly. Jesus alone exactly. for salvation. Now, this might shock people, but look at this verse. This verse says, thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Mm -hmm. So do the devils believe in Jesus in the sense that they believe Jesus existed? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So the devils are going to heaven? You know what? They even tremble and you don't. 
Well, you sorry, good for nothing sinner. <laughs> you don't yeah. tremble like the devil's. Do. You're worse than a devil if you're not trembling. <laughs> when you think about the Lord, have you ever, I've heard a guy preach that one time. I was like, wow, that was pretty good. So it's not enough to just say, believe in Jesus. That's there's right. a context of what it means to believe in Jesus. And that's pretty much the whole counsel of God. That's why you read the Bible to understand what does it mean to believe in Jesus? Amen. Because to just believe that Jesus exists is not how we're saved. That's right. So go ahead and say a couple things and then we're going to get to the dictionary and yep. then we're going to look at some more verses, but go ahead and get to the, go, go ahead. And if you want to say a few things. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're absolutely right. Brother breaker. Um, Again, as a Roman Catholic, I've always believed in Jesus. But when we say believe, sometimes, depending on the person, we'll have a different definition. So, for example, in the Hispanic culture, right, at least I'm, I'm half Hispanic, and I know a lot of Hispanic women, you know, they say, I see, I believe in Jesus. Oh, yeah, but Jesus is my Savior and Lord, right? And but and, you, and it looks good on the outside, but when you start asking them the questions, well, what do you mean by this? What do you mean by that? Then they tell you, well, you, I just have a strong faith. I've always had a strong faith in the Lord Jesus, and that faith is going to get me because I'm relying on my strong, persevering faith. And what they mean by that is, oh, they're trying to be good people. They're trying to do the good works and everything, and they're trying to, they're trying to be good, you know. And that's what they're including in their faith. That's their strong, they persevering have, faith. Outline. They have a faith plus works gospel. Yeah, they claim they're believing in is. Jesus, but they're holding on to their works. So that's are they is, saved? Brother. But they're no. not believing in Jesus if they're exactly. adding to it, right? Well, they're so just. Ahead. It's, it depends on the person who you're talking to. That's why I say when you're leading someone to Christ, you need to spend some time with them and actually question them. Hey, what do you mean by this? Well, what do you mean by that? Or, you know, even if they do say, oh, I believe in the book. Well, what do you mean by that? Like, because there's some people say, well, I've, I've always believed in the blood. Oh, you see, that's your problem right there. We'll get to that in a minute. We're just talking about belief. I'm sorry, brother. If I all you do is go tell somebody, well, just believe in Jesus. And that's exactly. what a lot of churches do. They say it like this. Well, just believe in Jesus. Yeah. A person's going, what do I believe about him? Yeah. That he lived 2,000 years ago? That he was the Messiah? That good that hair? He was born, that I he, believe that he has a nice colorful skin. <laughs> you I mean, know. What do, that, that's not enough information for someone to understand. And brother, in Spanish church, because I also sometimes do Spanish church, and I was talking to this lady. And she's like, well, I trust Christ as my Savior. Well, why? Oh, because Christ is God, and he's a good person. That's why I trust him. In right, and, and what does it mean that when they say, I believe in Jesus? Well, I had a cousin one time that was lost as a golf ball in high weeds. And yeah. I asked him, and he was driving me home, 30-minute ride, and I wanted to witness to him. And I said, hey, man, you ever been saved by Jesus? He goes, yeah, man, I got saved by Jesus one time. I said, all right, tell me about it. And for 30 minutes, he told me he was a pilot. And he told me about how he went up in this storm and he was flying and he didn't believe in God or the Bible. But the storm started coming and he knew I'm dead. The wind's too strong. There's no way I can get down. He said, oh, God, please save me, Jesus. I just I trust in you now. I just please save me, Jesus. Please save me. And then he said he came in and, he, and the plane went sideways and then came in and he landed. And he got out and he kissed the ground and he says, see, I believe in Jesus. He saved me. And I looked at him and I go. That's not what I was asking. Yeah, exactly. That was physical salvation. And you were saved physically from dying that day. But I'm asking, when did Jesus save your soul oh. by faith in what he did? And he's like, what do you mean? What are you talking about? So I have um, I, I really believe that there's a lot of good meaning pastors out there yes. that accept people as brethren without asking that person. Tell me your testimony. Tell me more. To yeah. see if that person is really saved or not. That's right. Because a person can say, I believe in Jesus, and they can be all over the place. I didn't tell you. I don't know if I told you about this Hispanic guy that said he believed in Jesus. And uh, he was trying to commit suicide. I had to talk him out of it on the phone, I think once or twice. And I asked him, hey, you know, I, I never asked you your testimony. How do you get saved? He goes, well, he said, I just, the Bible says, take up your cross and follow Jesus and believe in him. So I just decided I'd believe in him and take up my cross. And so I'm just following Jesus. And he looks at, well, I'm on the phone, so I, I don't know if he looked at me, but then he goes, right? Isn't that it? Just decide to follow Jesus? And I go, no, that is not it. Oh, well, well I believe in Jesus. I said, what do you believe? And so I went into it and I explained to him the true gospel. He says, I never heard that before. So he claims to be believing in Jesus. 
And it was very clear to me that his works are what he was trusting in because he says, I'm following Jesus and suffering for him. And so what I'm doing for him will get me to heaven. So does that sound like a saved man? Not to me, not to me. So it is not a sin to ask someone for their testimony. Yeah. And it is not a sin to say, is that it? (laughs) And then say, I mean, can I show you more? The whole counsel of God can, because that doesn't sound like enough to me. Well, when you do that, they go, oh, well, you're trying to talk people out of their salvation. Well, if they're not saved, then you're not doing that, are you? Oh, exactly. Remember in the Bible, was it Aquila and Priscilla? And they came across this guy, and it says they showed unto him more perfectly the way. Yes, sir. More perfect. And so that's what a lot of people do nowadays. A guy says, I'm saved. They take him at face value and said, oh, you must be, because you just said you were. Well, I believe in Jesus. Oh, well, then you're saved. Remember that famous um, so-called preacher up north? That was a, it's just a quick one, two, three, repeat after me type of preacher. Yeah. He's, I heard him preach a message and he says, I told God, God, I'm going to win eight people to you today. Well, who are you to mandate to God how many people get saved? That's kind of odd to me. And he said, I won seven people to the Lord that day. And I was driving home and I started crying because I'd only won seven and I wanted to win one more. So he says, I stopped at a stoplight and I looked over and there was a guy in a cor- in, a, in a Cadillac. And I rolled him out of my window and I said, hey. Do you believe in Jesus? And the guy goes, yes. He goes, all right. Rolled up the window and said, praise God. I just want another one to the Lord. Oh, now, man. Isn't that the most shallowest thing you've ever heard in your life? So he didn't explain to him what it meant to believe in Jesus. How, how do you know he didn't have a guy in the back seat named Jesus, Jesus, that, that was working for him? He goes, yeah, I believe him. He's sitting right there. Jesus, listen, this guy's asking if I know you. I mean, so is it enough to just say, I believe in Jesus? What does it mean to believe in Jesus? Let's pull up. I'm going to add it yeah. to the stage here, and I might need you to, um, of course, of course, of course I have to go ahead and, and go down with it. But yeah. this is belief, and what I want to do here before we get into this, I want to show you what it means to believe. I want to show you what the word faith means, and I want to show you what trust means, because, like I said, there's people out there that do not give a good, clear presentation of the gospel. And they tell people, oh, just ask Jesus to save you or just ask Jesus in your heart or just repeat after me or just believe in Jesus. And all these things, where is their faith Mm -hmm. in the finished work of Christ? A lot of times they don't tell them about the finished work of Christ. They say, here's the work you do. And if you'll do this, you go to heaven. And for many years, that person is left trusting in what they did rather than what Jesus did. And yet they'll tell you, but I just believe in Jesus. But what does that mean to them? It, yeah. In many cases, they're believing in what the man told them, not what the Bible says. That's right. That's kind of a sad, sad thing. So we're going to look at belief, faith, and trust. And what does it mean to believe? It's not just with your head. It's from the heart that you believe in something. And believing is, receive, is receiving. Yeah. We're going to look at these verses. But let's look at the Webster's go up and show this is the Webster's 1828 dictionary. Yeah, Webster's 1828. Here's what believe means to credit upon the authority or testimony of another, to be persuaded of the truth of something upon the declaration of another, or upon evidence furnished by reasons. So it almost sounds like you have to reason with someone and take them through the scriptures and declare to them the That's counsel right. of God. Now, you might not have a long time to talk to someone, but I'm almost to the point now where I don't see how a person can get saved less than 30 minute, minutes of dealing with them. Most people are either never been to church and they know nothing. So you've got to start telling them a lot before they can even understand. Other people, they go to church and they're in a cult and it's a yeah. deprogramming session, session that you have to do. And you've got to go through and you've got to deprogram. No, that's not what it says. Look at the Bible. And and it's almost like you have to go through there and talk them out of the falseness that they believe in exactly. before they will believe in the truth. Yep. So look at what this says here. It says by reason. Remember in the Bible says reasoning with them from the scriptures, arguments and deductions of the mind or by other circumstances than personal knowledge. When we believe upon the authority of another, we always put confidence in his veracity. When we believe upon the authority of reasoning arguments or the concurrence of facts and circumstances, we rest our conclusions upon their strength or probability, their agreement with our own experience to expect our hope with confidence Uh to trust to trust now you go down a little bit and it says believe is a verb is to have a firm persuasion 
of anything, which is what? Faith. In some cases, to have full persuasion. And um, to believe in is to hold as the object of faith. So according to the Bible, we're going to look at those verses, but I want you to see it in the dictionary as well. Yeah. You have to know what your faith is to be in. That's right. There is an object of your faith. And maybe you've seen my video, maybe you haven't, but the video I did, um, the blood of Jesus Christ, the mechanics of salvation or the object yeah. of our faith. The Bible says the object of our faith is to be the blood of Jesus. Now Amen. go down a little bit where it says in theology. Yeah. In theology to believe sometimes expresses a mere assent of the understanding to the truths of the gospel, as in the case of Simon. In, other, in others, the word of, implies that this assent of the mind, a yielding of the will and affections, accompanied with a humble reliance on Christ for salvation. And oh. look, it gives you Acts 8.37. What does that say? If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. So it's not just a mere assenting with your head. Oh, I believe that in my head. It's I am trusting in that with my entire soul yes, and being. I 100% rely and trust in Jesus Christ. So Amen. believing is putting faith in, is relying on, and is trusting in something. So let's look at these verses. Does the Bible say, and, and this is why we're saying this, because there are some people out there that claim to be Bible believers <laughs> that say, well, belief and faith and trust, they're not the same thing, they're different. I'm like, do these guys even read the Bible? Do they even know what they're saying? That's not what the Bible teaches, brah, <laughs> to quote Brandon, brah. Yeah, so yeah. let's go to some scriptures, and let's look at some scriptures first about um, faith. And here's the one that you you brought this out. I thought this was really good the other day. Yeah, because exactly. I was just like, wow, Fabrielle. I mean, your mind, man. Man, if I could, I'd take your mind and I'd, I'd steal it and put it in here because. Oh, no, I wouldn't do you any good, brother. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Well, I take out the bad stuff. No, um, <laughs> the Lord's given you a lot of wisdom for such a young man. But look what it says, Acts 16, 30, and brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and, and thy house. And a lot of people stop there. Mm. And they use this to prove that we're saved by believing. We're saved by faith. Amen. It's faith alone. Yeah, it's believing. Amen. But look at the very next verse. This is what you pointed out. And I was like, man, that's good. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. So Paul didn't just go to them and say, now just repeat this after me and put the Bible aside. Let's don't look at the Bible. Just pray this prayer and repeat after me. Now you're saved. No, he says it's by faith that we're saved. It's by believing. Now let me take you to the scriptures. Exactly. And to you, the world. Let me show you some verses on what the Bible says is how to get saved. And also, and I, bet you, yep. I bet you he told him what to put his faith in. Amen. Right? So, say, you're going to say something, then we're going to go to the next yeah. verse. So, you know, as you can see, like, it's not like he just showed up and said, Believe in Jesus. Right. No, it, it's more to it. And if you don't believe me, if you're a normal soul, if someone here is a soul winner, you know very well you got to spend some time with the person, right? You got to show them that they're a sinner in need of a savior, right? Uh, you got to show them the gospel that Christ died for this. You got to spend some time with them, all right? It's not because there's some people who say, well, well, let's believe in Jesus, believe in the gospel, and don't add anything, don't add anything because, you know, don't you stop making the gospel complicated, don't add stuff to salvation. Well, guess we're what? Not. We're not and adding work to salvation. Exactly. All we're doing is saying, Believe is what saves. Now, exactly. let me show you what to believe in. Exactly. So, so go ahead. now with the person, they have to show them that Jesus was God, right? That's part of the revelation. Even though it doesn't say word for word, the Bible says they they, they, they spake unto them the word of the Lord. So that means they sat and they showed them, hey, Jesus is God. They had to have that, that knowledge in them so it can go down in heart. Jesus is God who died for your sins. He shed his blood. He was buried and he rose again. They had to sit down and expound the word of God into them. They had to show them the word of God. Right. because, in, And even if you don't believe this and you're just a soul winner, you know this practically speaking. When you win a soul to Jesus Christ, it's not just one verse or, or one or two verses and that's it. No, you got to show them the whole counsel of God. Right. As See, for the break it's a persuasion. They're, they need to be persuaded, fully oh, persuaded, Paul says. Right. Well, you, you can only be persuaded when you see God's word. Yeah. And the word of God works in your heart. So the more yeah. the word of God, the more you have a chance of believing it. That's but if right. you just go to somebody and say, uh, put the Bible aside, just let me tell you this. You just do this and you're going to heaven. Where's the word of the Lord? We, um, the whole there was a guy that went to our Bible school. 
that was called the greatest evangelist that ever came out of that school. And I found that guy and I found he made a VHS tape. And I wish I could have gotten that VHS tape into a digital format, but I couldn't. But on that tape, he said to go win souls, he said, leave your Bible at home because that scares people. Go knock on doors and don't take your Bible. Do you believe that, Fabrio? That's and he would tell that. people, now just believe in Jesus. Now repeat after me. And so he's getting people to think salvation is a one, two, three, repeat after me. But why isn't he showing them verses? Why isn't he showing them the whole counsel of God? Why is he telling them, don't take your Bible and show them that? <laughs> I've always had a problem with that. I've always said, man, that's crazy. You got it. So, yes, we're saved by believing. But just saying, hey, it's belief that saves you and not telling a person what to put their faith in. Uh oh, yep. That doesn't seem like that's enough, right? So let me yep. show you another verse. So we saw a verse on believe. Here's a verse, and this is uh, Jesus speaking to Paul, and he says, I'm going to make you a witness. Yep. And then he says down here in verse um, 18 that God's reason for Paul going to preach was to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith mm -mm. that is in me. So are we saved by faith? Yes. Sure. Are we saved by believing? Yes. But if all you tell someone is, well, you're saved by faith, and you say when you believe, and you don't tell them what to put their faith in, are you yeah. winning someone to the Lord? <laughs> that's kind of that's yes. kind of silly. It's, it's like telling easy. somebody. Um, I, I mean, I can't even think of it because it's so weird. But it's it's like telling somebody, you know, downtown, the store just opened up. Okay, this happened to us years ago. And our friend called us and he goes, I'm downtown right now at a restaurant that just opened up and they're giving free food to everybody. He said, get down here. If all he told me was they're giving free food and then he hung up, I'd be like, I believe they're giving away free, but I need to know more details or I can't receive that yeah. food because yeah. I don't know where to go to get it. So more details. There's That's more details it. than just believe in the Jesus. Yes, we're saved yeah. when we believe in Jesus. But what do you believe in? Now, let me show you Ephesians 1 13. Yeah. Amen. So we're not saying it's not faith that saves you. We are saying you're saved by faith. But we're also saying that the Bible teaches what you have to believe in and place your faith in to be saved. Exactly. And that you're not saved unless your faith is in that. And that's why we take our time as soul winners is to point to them yeah. and trust this. And this is, um, well, I like look at verse 12 too, that we should be the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So believing is trusting. Amen. And it's what? It's faith. So there's something that you place your faith in and you place your faith in that something, that's when you're believing in it, that's when you're trusting it, that's when you're saved. What is it? Well, that's in Romans chapter 3 and verse 25. Amen. And it's very specific. And it says, In whom God set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. Now, to declare his righteousness for the mission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. Some people say that's only the sins that are past. No. You read Paul, and this is the revelation to Paul, that all our sins He's forgiven us all trespasses, past, present, and future, through his blood. Yeah. So it's the blood that you trust in that gets you to heaven. What is the blood? When I say the blood, what am I saying? I'm not just saying what he did on the cross. I'm saying the gospel because that blood was on the cross and that blood yeah. was offered in heaven at the same time. So let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 4. And we just saw the verse that said that you first trusted the gospel and you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Yeah. What is the gospel? It's right here. Amen. And you know what the gospel has? Seven points. There's seven points in the gospel. Yeah. And I can't wait to get to this. But look what it says. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you received and wherein you stand, by which also you're saved. So you're saved when you what? When you stand in this. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, lest you believed in vain. What does it mean to believe in vain? Vanity is self. If you're trusting in something you did, then you haven't believed in Jesus. You're believing in Jesus plus something else. For I, first of all, for I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. And it says how 
That's an important word taken out of a lot of new versions. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So here is the gospel. Now, yeah. I'm going to show you guys this, and I know you know this, but it's important that we see this. What are, What is the gospel? Do you know there's seven parts to the gospel? Amen. Now, like, you mean you have to know all seven parts to get saved? Well, the blood includes all seven. So if you're trusting in the blood, you're trusting in this. But look at this, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. The seven points of the gospel. Number one, how? How did Jesus die? He shed his blood. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. Yeah. So he had to shed his blood. What if Jesus um, drowned in the Sea of Galilee? Are we all saved because of his death? Some people say it's not the blood, it's the death that saves you. Oh, well, well, if Jesus would have slipped on a rock as he's walking down the mountain table and hit his head and died of a concussion, then we got saved right there. And we're not thinking about a cross. We're thinking about the rock. And we'd all go to Israel and say, where's the rock where he hit his head for my sins? Yeah. That's ridiculous. It's how he died. So Christ died for our sins, was buried. How did he die? He shed his blood. He died in a bloody manner. Our sins, though our sins be as scarlet, let them be as white as snow. He was buried rose again why was he risen again to go up and put his blood on the mercy seat in heaven yeah now look at this verse six according to the scriptures and look at that according to the scriptures you say why'd you write that twice robert breaker because it says it twice right there yeah. in in this place so why wouldn't you why wouldn't you do you see that according to the scriptures right here and according to the scriptures. I think that's one of the most important things is according to the scriptures. And yeah. I think that's what left is left out by so many churches today. Yeah. They just run around and say, oh, just believe in Jesus. And a guy goes, okay, what exactly? And you're supposed to come and say, well, according to the scriptures, it's this, this, and this. Exactly. But they don't do that. You know, so and they're telling people it's faith that saves, but they're not telling them faith in what? Yeah. You, and that, to me, is a great, great crime. Amen. Look at this. People will attack and say, oh, Breaker doesn't know what he's talking about. It's No, you don't have to trust the blood to be saved. Then why does the Bible say through faith in his blood if it's not through faith in his blood? Yeah, exactly. Go you ahead know. and grab a pencil and just, you know, write that verse yeah. out of your Bible. If, that, if that's what you believe, that dogmatically. And people actually think that that's adding... Like they, they have this mentality. Oh, once you have the blood, that makes it complicated. Hmm. Well, okay. If you have that stance, then guess what? Do not add that Jesus is God. Don't add that because you're making the gospel complicated, right? Do not add that it's not by works of righteousness because if you're making the gospel complicated, you see how that backfires? It does. Because if you just say, I mean, oh, does, yeah. believe in Jesus and call upon his name, that's it. You can't add any more. No, 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 no. You you have to include the well, whole counsel of God. Right. You and you call to. upon him by faith. It's faith yeah. that calls him the Lord. It it it's all upon, calling upon him by faith. That's so what believing happens. is receiving. So the way that you're saved is by faith. And when you believe, that's when you're saved. Amen. What do you, how do you receive? Faith in what? And not only so, but we also join God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the what? Atonement. That's the blood atonement. So you're telling me a person doesn't have to trust the atonement to get to heaven? They have to right. receive the atonement, brother. Then the context the is, well, those that did have joy. So let me uh, look at those people yeah. that are saying otherwise, and I'm going to look at their life and say, is there any joy in that person? <clears throat> and if they're not, and they're super critical, <laughs> and they're angry, and they're hateful, and they're name-calling, and they're attacking, yeah. I go, wow, maybe they're not saved because they don't have the joy of the Holy Spirit and the peace that passeth all understanding, <clears throat> right? So maybe they aren't saved because all they got is, hey, I just believe in Jesus. And in their mind, they're believing in Jesus and this, that, or the other thing. Or they could be believing in another Jesus. Did you know that? Yeah, that's possible. Um, what is that? That's in the Bible. So there's, in the spirit world, there's a lot of demons. You know what they say? They, they say, call me Jesus. Yeah, so here's a verse. Paul is, is saying this tongue in cheek to the people in Corinth because he says, man, I stand in doubt of you. But he says, for if he, if he that cometh preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, you might well bear with them. He says, I bet you'd accept those people, wouldn't you? And you should be accepting the one Jesus 
who is God. Now, do you need to believe that Jesus is God? Yeah. Yeah. The book of Hebrews. And if you get a chance, do our verse by verse Bible study through the book of Hebrews. The first seven, eight chapters is all about who Jesus is. He's the Messiah. He's the Christ. He's God. He's the king. And the next chapters are all about what he did. The one sacrifice forever and his blood is what washes our sins away. It's through the shedding of blood. Yeah, so no. does that sound too complicated to you? Not really. It's not really that. It's not. It's simple. You know, and you know what? People say, oh, that's complicated. No, that's not complicated. In our church, we teach this to our ch uh, ch uh, children at church, and they say it's simple themselves. Even a child can understand, right? And mm -hmm. this is the whole counsel of God. So people try to say, well, if you include the blood, you're making it complicated. You know, uh, With all due respect, unless there's something wrong in here, uh, normal children get this really easy. If you, right. I've dealt with ch uh, children on this, and they get it. You know, we asked them uh, expert questions. Me and my pastor were, were doing questionnaires for, for our children and youth nights. And we're going through the blood atonement. And they get this easy. They, In fact, they actually have the answers that most grown Christians don't even have. You know, they actually know the answers to this that most uh, grown Christians don't even have. You know, so people try to say, well, this is hard. Well, again, if you have that mentality to say, oh, if you add the blood of Jesus and you're making the gospel complicated, you're adding to the gospel. OK, then don't be a hypocrite, but live up to your own stance and do not add that Jesus is God. Do not add that it's not by works of righteousness we have done. Do not add that it's uh, salvation happens in a moment, time and a place. Don't don't add that it's by Christ alone. Don't add any, any of that stuff. Then if you want to hold to that right. standard, but you're guess not what? adding to salvation. We're not exactly. saying exactly. It's but I'm believing just saying, and something okay. else. We're saying, no, you yeah. should believe in all this. If you're exactly. believing in the blood, all then you are believing in all know, that. Believing in the yeah. blood, believing that Christ died for your sins, bare and rose again, believing it was by Christ alone. Nobody else could do it. Mary couldn't do it. So it's all of this in a bubble, exactly. basically. So when someone just says, well, I just believe in Jesus, it makes me go, and? Exactly. I mean, and? What, what do you mean by that? Well, I just believe that Jesus is is a good man. Well, uh, you're going to hell. Well, I just believe Jesus is the Messiah of Israel. Uh-uh. That's not enough today. Now, the early church, that was the start. That was the difference between the who gospel and the what yeah. message. Amen. And uh, you look at how many times Jesus says, believe in the name and the believe in his name. What is the name of Jesus? Jehovah saves. Yeah. Yahushua, or however you say it. So the thing to do is to understand this. Now, Old Testament versus New Testament. In the Old Testament, under the law, or even before the law, how did a person have their sins forgiven? All the way back to Adam and Eve. Yep. What happened? Adam and Eve sinned against God, and God goes, come here. And the Bible says he clothed them in skins of an animal. I bet yep. you anything that was a lamb. And that blood poured out. And I'm 100% certain that God says, that's what you got to do when you sin, because I accept blood. Sin. Now, yeah. why could I say that 100%? Because when you look at those sons of them, one was Abel, one was Cain. Cain was the good boy that followed mommy and daddy, and he came to God and offered lambs and yeah. said, hey, I'm trusting in this blood. Take this for me. Cain says, no, nah, look at what I did, Lord, except my cantaloupes and my grapes. And look at this. I got some kohlrabi and some rhubarb over here. I mean, look, Lord, I even grew some sweet peas. And he offered up the fruit of his works. And God says, I, nope. I don't accept you. So you can go all the way back to the first people in the Bible. And the doctrine of no forgiveness without blood sacrifice yeah. is there. And all the way in the Old Testament, when they sinned, they bring a blood sacrifice. Then God gave the law. And under the law, if you sinned, you brought a sacrifice. And that blood was shed. And once that blood was accepted and offered up, that's called the blood atonement. We might as well read that because yep. so few today will. I, I'm just so tired of going to churches that don't preach the old blood-stained gospel. It's a, shame, man. it's a shame to see. And what's worse is people that would claim to be in our crowd, <laughs> they claim to be Bible believers, they don't preach the blood. Yeah. And then they attack people that do. When I got saved, my, I got saved through faith in his blood. And I remember talking to my dad and my dad yeah. saying, Son, there's so many churches that used to preach it. They're not preaching it anymore. And I said, why not, dad? Why not? And um, I'd go with dad to churches and we'd hear it once or twice. Then then toward 20, 30 years later, I didn't hear it at all. 
Yet they always preach, trust the blood, faith in the blood. Now they're not saying it. What happened? Well, Billy Graham entered into evan uh, the evangelicals and he didn't say it. Um, in, in, in Independent Baptist, you had some fellows that, that got in from a big college and they just they went from Romans 3.25 to Romans 10.13. Nothing wrong with Romans 10.13, but if that's all you give is the gospel, then you're making someone think, well, that's what saves me. It's what I do. And that's my testimony. I thought it was the prayer that saves. And for many years, I was lost trusting in my prayer rather than trusting in the propitiation of Jesus Christ. So look at this. This is the Old Testament. And it's, it's baffling to me how there's men out there that claim to be Bible believers that will preach against this message when this is the message that I learned when I went to Bible school and yeah. the message that my dad learned when he went to church. Obviously, they have apostatized. And they are apostates if all they say is just believe in Jesus without telling you what to place your faith in when it comes to Jesus. Um, if someone, let's see, where's the verse I want? If a person has a sin. Okay, if one of the common people sin through ignorance, while he doeth somewhat against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be done and be guilty, or if his sin which he has sinned come to his knowledge, then he shall bring his offering. All right, when he brings that offering and he shall lay his hand upon the head of the sin offering and slay the sin offering in the place of the burnt offering. And the priest shall take of the blood thereof with his finger and put it on the horns of the altar of the burnt offering and shall pour out all the blood thereof at the bottom of the altar. And then the priest is going to do all this because he gets to eat it. He's going to eat the fat and all that stuff. But it says, and it burn it upon the altar for a sweet savor unto the Lord and the priest shall make an atonement for him and it shall be what? forgiven him mm. so in the old testament under that law the way to find forgiveness of sins was through a blood sacrifice that's right and the type is amazing because it's the same type today only we don't do this with animals jesus christ is the lamb of Amen. god sin of the world oh i got it too low for you to see i guess I'll get that up higher so Amen. what what is the type today well there a man would come and put his hand on the head and then he would cut the sacrifice what is he saying I'm the sinner. This should be me. But I accept the innocent. Lord, will you accept the innocent for me, the guilty? And yeah. the Lord says, OK, I see in your heart that you're coming to me just as as uh, Abel, that you're guilty. And then the Lord says now that when it's offered. So do you think that they had their faith in the blood back then? Yeah. If they knew their Old Testament, what would they have thought? As soon as they saw that priest throw that yeah. blood on there, they're like, oh, I can rest. Because Rad I know thing, you're right? right, confidence persuaded that that blood truly covered them. Right, same well, concept today. They were, we're washed in the blood. I don't think they were washed back then, but oh, they I, were. I, I, said covered. I said covered, brother. Like back then, they were covered, but not taken I, away. I got you covered. Yeah, but yeah. they were forgiven by the blood. Yeah. So why is it different today? One of the things that people do today, and this is why people hate Robert Breaker, because they go to mm -hmm. churches that don't preach a message of the blood. And they say, oh, that Brunker guy, he's against this verse in the Bible. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm not against any verse in the Bible. Right. What I'm against is twisting verses out of context. Exactly. Many people go to this verse and say, well, for whosoever shall call upon the Lord shall be saved. And they and stop the right there. Fabriel, should we ever go to one verse and take it out of context? No. 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 Like, and this is applicable for any verse in the Bible, you know. So, and they say, well, the gospel is this. And so if you just go to God and you just say, God, I don't want to go to hell. Please save me. Then you're saved. Does God save us that way? Are we saved? Because we just say, Lord, please. No, sir. And we're sincere. Try that in the Old Testament. Go to the priest in the Old Testament. And go, look, I can't afford an animal. So I just thought I'd come here today and just say, hey, priest, please forgive me. And the priest goes, God gave us the book the scriptures and he said this is how it has to be done if you don't follow this you don't get saved well i think god is a caring loving god and i you know what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna walk through that veil and go in there and talk to god directly and just say god you forgive me right now and they walk right in and guess what happens to him he dies <laughs> they would die in the old testament if anyone went into that holy of holies the most holiest place <clears throat> they were dead yeah so you're yep. telling me that it's not according to the scriptures that's how it was back then how is it today you come to god by faith exactly. and so when we talk about calling upon the name of the lord i'm not against romans 10 13 exactly. but i want to make sure we well let's go to this verse first amen 
What does it mean to call upon the name of the Lord? Do you just go, God, I don't want to go to hell. Please save me. Amen. And God saves you because you said, please. If that's salvation, then why did Jesus die? Exactly. He could have got a new prophet and said, hey, uh, Jebediah, come here. You're going to be the new prophet. Just go around. Tell everybody. Just ask me to save them and I'll save whoever asked me. But he didn't do that. He had to come. He had to be the sacrifice, the innocent for the guilty. He had to die for our yeah. sins. And then he tells us to call upon him by faith. And that calling is a matter of the heart. Heart. That's Not right. Not the mouth. Man, I'm on a roll. I got to keep going. I want you to talk too, but I'm, I'm on a roll here. Oh, Look you're at right. With them that call on the Lord out of a what? Pure heart. Yeah. So just with the mouth asking God for salvation and no faith or believing in Jesus and what he did in his blood from the heart, all you've done is uttered a vain religious prayer. Are exactly. you saved? Yeah. Look at this verse. I believe it's uh, Matthew chapter 10 and verse. Um, oh, I need to find it. I know it's 13. Yeah, I think it's 13. Let's see if I can find it. 13, 15. All right, we're going to come to 13, 15 here in a minute. Oh, yeah. We'll go here first, then we'll go the other one. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, should understand with their heart. There has to be some understanding. You've yeah. got to understand something before you can get saved and That's should right. be converted. A lot of churches, they don't teach this. They just go to a center and they say, hey, you want to get saved? Repeat this after me. Okay, now you're saved. Have a nice day. And they walk away. And the guy's like, what just happened? They yep. didn't show them the whole counsel of God. They didn't explain it to them. Exactly. Um, well, I'm looking for the verse. Do you know you can come to God only with your lips and still be lost? That's right. It says this here in Matthew chapter 15 and verse 8. That's what I was looking for earlier. Yeah. You know who the person is who thinks you're saved by your mouth? Roman Catholic. They're, they're a hypocrite. That's the yeah. context. And uh, you know what it does when you leave out the blood? It makes it a tradition of none effect. Uh-oh. There you go. This people draw nigh to me with their mouth and honor with me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Wow. So if all you do is with your mouth say something, then you're still lost. Exactly. If Romans 10, 13 is, is just the fact that you vocally call on the Lord is what saves you, then every Roman Catholic is saved. And I guess we can enjoy that and knowing that every Catholic's going to heaven because they pray prayers and ask God to you know take them to heaven, exactly. things like that. Exactly. So, so we know that that can't be it. So, yeah, it's so true. Let's look faith. at the context. Look at the context. We're saved by believing. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. So it's not works that saves us. It's when we believe. Amen. But believe in what? Romans 3.25. You know, Romans 3 is before Romans 10. Yeah. <laughs> but look what it says. But the righteousness which is of faith... Speak, speak it from this way. Right. So faith speaks faith to God. Amen. So when the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, the context is by faith from the where? Heart. There you go. And it says, say not in thine heart who shall ascend. But then it goes down and it says, what saith it? The word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the yeah. word of faith which we preach. Yes, Amen. it can come out the mouth. But if you just with your mouth beg for salvation and you're not trusting in the gospel, the blood of Christ from your heart, you're still a lost religious person. And I just want to include this, uh, brother. Uh, again, you know, any soul winner knows you got to sit down with a person. And the main point where you're trying to pierce, because the Bible is like a sword, right? And it's almost like fencing. You're trying to pierce that heart with the word of God. Your mm -hmm. your aim is not at the lips. You're not looking up saying, I'm going to pierce his mouth real quick. No, no, you're, you're trying to pierce his heart, man. You're trying exactly. to get him to realize something about his sinful condition, realize that Amen. Jesus Christ shed his blood. You know, so when are you going from the heart? Are you going to trust on what he did for you? Uh, the moment you trust from the heart, your heart automatically calls out to God by faith. Right. Well, that's and you know, how did how do we get in this whole mess to begin with? Why is there sin in the world? Don't know. Because of the mouth. Some woman went and ate something they weren't supposed to. Exactly. <laughs> So why are there people out there saying, now the way to fix it is with your mouth. They have an oral fixation. Why aren't they showing the whole counsel of God? No, God trieth the hearts, the Bible says. God's yeah. looking at your heart. So we see this here. 
And a lot of people say, well, Breaker leaves out Romans 10, 9, and 10. No, I, I give those in context. Let's look yes. at the context. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Are we saved by faith from the heart? Yes, sir. In the blood of Christ? Yes. Now, can we confess? Sure. But is it the confession that saves us? If it is, we should all be Roman Catholics and go join that church right now and go to confession. The next verse explains it. For what the heart man believeth unto righteousness. I receive the imputed righteousness of Christ when I place my faith in his finished work, the blood atonement. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. That's when it comes out. Amen. Now, some people say confession is made unto salvation means the confession itself is what saves you. No, so sir, are we sir. saved by faith plus works? You told me you looked this up. What what does unto mean? Confession is made. I believe it means when you're saved, then you confess. Hey, I'm saved. Oh, That's okay. what a confession is. You don't confess something that hasn't happened yet. The you Lord confess Jesus. it after it yeah. takes place. The Lord Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Right. What you have naturally in your heart, if you're saved. It's going to come out naturally. You're going to naturally be out confessing your salvation to others. It's going to happen naturally, right? Exactly. You're going to be saying, yo, I just got saved, man. Thank you, Lord. I just got saved. It just comes out naturally. Now, that doesn't. it doesn't mean you got to do that to get saved. That's right. just a natural byproduct. It's like if I love the King James Bible, right, you know what I'm naturally going to be talking about? The King James Bible, you know, mm -hmm. and this – and if you could turn, brother, to 2 Corinthians 4.13 for me, brother. All right, let's second. go there in just a second. Let's finish this up first. Okay. Yeah, yes, yeah, sure. Say, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. So it's the believing that saves you. But there's Amen. no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. How do you Amen. call on him? We saw the context. By faith from the Amen. heart in the finished work. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Oh, so now we see it in the context. you got to call on him from the heart, not just the mouth. Exactly. By faith in his finished work. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? So you can call on someone that you without believing. How then shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel and bring glad tidings of good things. Amen. But they have not all obeyed the gospel for Isaiah said, Lord. Who so you telling me that you have to preach the gospel before someone can get saved? Uh oh. I have heard so many people that claim to be preachers, Brother Fabriel, that say, and I've heard them tell me this. No, you don't have to hear anything to get saved. Just repeat this after me and you'll go to heaven. You don't have to know anything to get saved. Just ask God to save you. That is a person who has not read the Bible. And I have to beg and, and ask, are they even saved? Because the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. There's something you got to hear preached so that yeah. you can believe in. You can put your faith in. Exactly. So what do you think that is? So I could go on, but where did you want to go? Uh, go to 2 Corinthians 4.13, brother. 2 Corinthians 4.13. The Apostle Paul explains this concept in the uh, from Romans 10 even further in 2 Corinthians 4.13. Right? We mm -hmm. having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, right? according to Ephesians 1.13, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit once you believe. So that sealing happens there. And therefore, have I spoken? Right. We so believe, people, and therefore we speak. These people that say you have to confess to get saved, they don't understand. Confession is what you do when you're saved. You don't confess to get saved. Because it says here, when we believe, then we speak. Then we confess. Hey, I believe. I'm saved. So it's not the words that we say that does anything for us. It's whether or not we're trusting in the finished work of Jesus Amen. Christ, his blood atonement. And we receive that atonement by faith. And we joy when we receive that atonement. And I see a lot of people out there that claim to be Christians and they have no joy. Yeah. But the Bible says we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have now received the atonement. Yep. So where's your joy? Where's your peace that passeth all understanding? Look what it says, much more than being now justified by your prayer. Is that what it says? <laughs> no, no, sir. But I trusted in my prayer because that's all I heard yeah. in these churches I went to. Oh, Romans 10, 13. I'll just repeat. Every night I'd get down by my bed and say, well, Lord, I still don't want to go to hell. I don't feel saved. I don't, yeah. I'm just going to ask you to save me again. And I asked them. I had the beggar's gospel. I didn't have the blood-stained gospel. Messed up. We're justified by his blood. We're not justified by what we do. And exactly. now that I'm saved... I know that I'm justified by faith, but you can't just say, just believe in Jesus. You have to say, believe in the atonement of Jesus. In That's the right. Of Jesus, the, the gospel, gospel. Everything. 
exactly so we're not making it too hard no. we're just explaining it and when i was younger my dad was a sunday school teacher in a lot of churches here and some people know this some people don't but pensacola florida has a lot of churches a lot of good churches and in the guinness book of world records i think it's uh nine mile or not no yeah nine mile road was the um, Guinness Book of World Records of the most churches per square mile of anywhere in the world. And my dad was, when he was um, younger, he had a 25 foot long Bible chart. And he was asked of preachers, a lot of them independent Baptists or Southern Baptists, to go and teach Sunday school, the men's Sunday school. And my dad would put that chart on the wall. And a lot of times it was a small room. It'd take up three walls. And those men would just come up and just look at that and be like, wow, that's the whole Bible out there. And my dad, yeah, yeah. And my dad would start to teach dispensations and open their eyes and they could see, wow, look at this. Look. And they fell in love with the word of God until the pastor came in and he's like, um, no, breaker, you can't preach that anymore. Because many of the pastors didn't know dispensations and they felt like he, he, he was going to try to take over their church or something. My dad doesn't want to take over. He just wants these men to be saved. Yeah. And I could tell you story after story after story that my dad told me. One of these famous churches in Pensacola that people we know go to. My dad taught Sunday school and the pastor's father and brother were in the class. And my dad says, it's through faith in the blood atonement of Christ that you're safe, trusting only in what he did, not what you do. And that man, the father and the brother of the pastor said, no, it still works. And they got dad kicked out. Because they trusted in faith plus works. And that was an independent Baptist church. So I'm an ordained independent Baptist because for many years they were the ones preaching the blood. Now some still do. And uh, those that don't, I hope they hear stuff like this and get back to preaching what they used to. So I don't try to trick people into, well, just repeat this prayer and you'll go to heaven. There's some knowledge that a person needs to understand before right. they can say, how do you instruct someone to believe in something if you don't tell them what to believe in? Now, you go ahead. Talk. Tell you're, me you're that. All right, Brother Birkin, I want to share a, a quick testimony. Uh, just uh, what was it, like a month ago or something like that? Uh, I, I teach Spanish church and, and my church sometimes when we have Spanish people come over, my pastor's giving me permission, you know, teach Spanish church and try to try to win uh, Hispanic people to the Lord. And one day it, it was just one guy showed up, one Hispanic, and I just sat down with him and opened my Bible. I said, Are you saved? Do you know you're going to heaven? Right. And according to the testimony of this guy, he he's always known. Again, you know, this is why we have to take our time with people because he's always known that Christ died for our sins. He's always known that it was the blood of Jesus. He's always known that. But there's never been a moment, time, and a place when he realized he was a sinner and his sins would send him to hell. And because of that, he's relying on that alone to save him, you see. So mm -hmm. I try to explain it to him. And I'm like, brother, do you know that it's a moment, time, and a place when you believe you're saved? He's like, no, it can't be that simple. It can't be that simple. I'm like, here, let me show you. And I showed him in John chapter 3. I showed, I, I even took him to Romans 10, brother. To drive the point even home further, I showed him all of Romans 10, you know, and he's like, oh, no, it can't be that simple. All right, let me show you another one. And I kept showing him scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture. And it's just finally he's like. All of a sudden, I could see his face change, you know, like like it's like the gravity hit. And he's like, so it's truly by trusting what Christ did. I'm like, yes. Do you uh, believe us thou this? Uh, the Lord Jesus would say that in John chapter 11, he would say, believest thou this? He's like, mm -hmm. you know, you could tell like, like he's about to have almost a heart attack because he's like, this is the first time he's ever heard of this, you know? And he goes, okay, now I trust in the blood of Jesus for my salvation. I'm like, there you go, bro. There you go, so, man. And, you know. see, there's there's got to be a time when a person understands they're lost. Exactly. And then they understand, oh, it's Christ. It's through faith alone, in Christ alone, through his blood alone. The blood yeah, is man. the gospel. It's all in there. So, and that's when you're saved. And it's not of works, lest any man should boast, like this yeah. verse says. Exactly. And that's what's so frustrating. And you've seen it, too. Yeah. You go to many so-called independent Baptist preachers, and they just, well, just believe in Jesus. They, they, don't, they think they're doing good because they believe it's by faith and not works. But they're not telling the person to put their faith only 
in the finished work of Christ. So exactly. a lot of people are still lost trusting in their own self-righteousness. And one drop of your own self-righteousness will damn you to hell. You have to give up completely trusting in what you do to get to heaven and, and trust I, only in what Jesus did. And Amen. I just want to add this also, because just like that situation I pointed out, that man always understood the blood atonement. All that was missing is that moment, time, and a place, right? Some people have it in reverse and have a moment, time, and a place when they ask Jesus in their heart, but they, they've never trusted what Christ has done for them. They, too, still need to get saved. Yeah. You know? And because then there's other people that prayed and they believed at the same time. Yeah, so, and there's other people you know, exactly. Who am I? I'm not telling you you're saved or not, but I am asking you this. And the reason I'm asking you this is because God's going to ask you this. Amen. What are you trusting in to get you to heaven? My dad would always do this before he'd win somebody to the Lord. He'd take them through so many verses. And then he says, let me ask you one question. If you were to die right now and stand eyeball to eyeball with Jesus Christ, and he were to say, why should I let you into heaven? How would you respond? And I saw my dad, he'd usually have him come over to the house and sit down at the table. And he loved to have his Bible. And I saw how uncomfortable they'd be sitting there. Going, oh, what's he doing with this Bible? But my dad would go through, make them realize they were sinners, make them understand that Jesus was God. And then just show them it's the blood. And he says, now, why should God let you in heaven? And if they said, well, I'm not as bad as other people. My dad goes, wrong answer. You're going to hell get like in a handbasket. Yeah, man. Well, well, I was baptized. Wrong answer. You're going to fry like a yeah, chicharron. Fry, fry. You know what chicharron is? It's a Spanish word for a sausage. And it will, well, um, but I go to church. Even the Pope goes to church. And my dad would just keep, and they, I've seen them, they get mad. They'd be like, well, yeah. well, well, what's your answer? And my dad would answer in three words. I'd answer in two words, but my dad would, would say, Lord, the blood. Amen. Because that's the only reason that I can have access. Because it's nothing that I have done that gets me to heaven. I have to give up and completely trust in what you've done for me. Amen. And people ask me, I'd say, the blood. The blood is the price of admission. And if I'm trying to get in with anything else, I can't. you got to have the ticket to ride the plane. And if you go to the airport and you say, well, I don't have a ticket, but I'd sure like to get on that airplane. Look, I've got all this to offer. I'll even give you money. I'll, people go, no ticket, no interest, right? No yeah. ticket to play, you know. So you've got to have the ticket, and the ticket is faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. So are you trusting solely in the finished work of Christ? We sing the hymns in church, and this is this whole thing is in those hymns. Exactly. And they don't sing these yeah. hymns anymore. I place my faith in nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. I just wanted to point out, I remember watching a video by Dr. Ruckman. He did a chalk talk on the password to heaven. <clears throat> I recommend everybody watches that because that video right there is exactly what we're talking about. The password to heaven. And at the very end, right, I'm not going to spoil the whole thing. But at the very end, the guy's there. He's like, the you know, he's, he's trying to get into heaven. And the angel says, password. He says, I'm just a part of sinner, but all my sins are under the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He's trusting mm -hmm. on that, you know. Mm -hmm. so a good example so, is is that video right there. Amen. And, you, and Ruckman used to say it right when I went there, when my dad went there, and then as he got older, I heard it less and less. I'm not oh, putting yeah. Ruckman down. I loved him. I appreciated him for teaching us the Bible. Going to Bible school there was just one of the greatest times of my life. But I'm just really sad because sometimes I meet people that went to that school, and they picked up the one, two, three, repeat after me gospel. Rather yeah. than their trust completely in the finished work of Christ gospel. And here's exactly. what it is. Are you standing in front of the cross? Or are you standing behind the cross? Because I'm standing behind the cross. And I'm saying, look, it's all what he did. It's not me. It's him. That's exactly. what I'm preaching. Trust what he's done. Uh, though a lot of people, though, they'll put the cross back here. No, no, no. Don't trust only in that. Now go do this. <laughs> That's the false gospel. Yeah. Anybody that points you to anything else is not preaching the true gospel. Amen, what did brother. Paul say? Paul said this. Let's see if I can find this verse. Well, let's see. I guess verse 23, but it says, We preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stomach block unto the Greeks foolishness. 
That's what we're supposed to be preaching. If you preach Christ crucified, what do you have to preach? What happened when he was crucified? The blood was blood. everywhere. Can't get rid of it. Let's see. There was one more. What's that verse? He said, I want to know nothing among you. If Christ crucified, they look for it. Well, I thought that was it, but maybe it's not. I'll but, look for it. But that's such an important thing. And... Um, you don't want to deceive people. The rapture is coming so quickly that the last thing I want to do is make someone think they're saved by something they do. So I'm in no way trying to point people to me. <laughs> That's a cult. It's all about me and what I say. Listen to me. No one has ever heard Robert Breaker say that, nor will they. Yeah. I'm saying it's all about Jesus and his blood. Trust him and what he did. Now, how could anyone who claims to be a Christian Go against that message. Here's what they're doing. I love this verse. And that's why I don't spend time um, talking about other people. I just feel like it's a complete waste of time. And this is why. Let's see. This is this is it. All these people that go and speak bad things. About our our people, brother. brother. Okay. Let's uh, remind me. I'm going to look that up. Okay. Let's look okay. at this one first. Only let your conversation be as becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit with one man, stranding, striving together for the faith of the gospel. What is the faith of the gospel? What is the object of our faith? What's the gospel? The blood atonement of Christ. And in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of what? Perdition. That means they're lost, but to you of salvation and that of God. So if someone is preaching against the message of receive the blood atonement by faith, all they're doing is going around telling everybody, hey, I'm not even saved. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not because I hate these people that I talk, you know, mention them. I feel sorry for them. I'm not going to be afraid of them. I pray for them because the more we look at the word of God, the more opportunity the Holy Spirit has to deal on their hearts and get them saved. Now, what's the verse? First Corinthians, what? It was, it was first Corinthians 2 2. 2 2. Don't mess with my 2 2, right? You know that song? Oh, I'm sorry, I went there. Okay. So, first Corinthians, look what he says. And this, this is all we're trying to say. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or with wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. I'm sick right now. I'm probably going to go pass out as soon as we're done here. I'm still much trembling, brother. I'm hot. But my yeah. speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. That yeah. your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Amen. What does the hymn say? There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood. In the blood of the Lamb. Heresy, that's adding to the gospel, heresy. <laughs> no, that's no. what my faith stands in, is that power of God. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So, Amen. I'm getting tired, so I'm going to let you talk. I, I feel like I've said as much as I possibly yeah, could. Right, brother. So, and what are, what do you want to add to that, brother? Yeah. It's just, it's just very simple. You know, this, this whole live stream can just be concluded in this, you know, believe the whole council, the whole council of God. That's it. Faith in the blood, Christ dying for your sins. He was buried and rose again, believing that it was God truly. And you taking that step of faith and realizing you're a sinner, re realizing you're a sinner, your sins will send you hell and leaning on that and trusting on the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ to save your soul. You know, it's really the whole council, you know. You can't just take one verse, uh, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and and you know, I say that mockingly, but you know, there's people who just use one verse and that's it. Or Romans said to do whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, and they don't explain the whole context, they don't explain what's the rest of the story, right? And we're not mocking those verses or making fun, we're just trying to clarify yeah, because exactly we're just we're there's, just a, to there's a verse in the Bible that says, Go to Bethel and transgress. Yeah. So does that mean I have to go to I don't know Bethel, Alabama, or Bethel, Kentucky, exactly. and find a whorehouse and then go and then I'll be like, I follow the Bible. No, no. You know? The context is God was telling Israel that because like you're sinning so much already. Why don't you go do that? 
Exactly. So you've got to know the whole Bible. Well, you you can't Bible. know the whole Bible, but you've got to know enough of the Bible. That's why Paul said, I have not, uh, if you go back to that verse, what verse was that, brother? That was Acts chapter 20. Can, can you go back to that, brother? Okay, Acts chapter 20. I want to show you something. There's a reason why he said, I have not shunned to declare unto you the whole counsel of God. There's a good reason why he said that. Because in Acts chapter 20, right, uh, scroll up a bit, brother. Scroll okay. up a bit. Okay, verse 26, right there. Wherefore, I take you, uh, take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. If, if anyone wants to know a cross-reference of that, that's in Ezekiel. Uh, that's in Ezekiel when basically God told Ezekiel, you know, if you say this to the people, you will be pure from their blood, right? You, this, this will not be laid on your charge, so to speak, right? So we, in order for us to be pure from the blood of all men, in this case would be in order for us to understand that we have not led anyone astray. We got to declare all the counsel of God. Amen. All of it. Because if you don't, you will be guilty of some blood on you, my friend. You know, don't be surprised yeah. in the great white throne when you're standing there with Jesus and someone pops up in there. Hey, you didn't mention to me about the blood of Christ. Why am I going to help that's going to be on you, brother. Or some of the people will say, why didn't you tell me Jesus was God? You know, there's going to be people like that. The Bible says the tears don't get wiped away until after that judgment. You know, look at, so that's look at what, what he, he mentions here. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous yeah. wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also their own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. That's what we're seeing happening, and that's YouTube can do that a lot, unfortunately. A lot of people go to YouTube to watch what some guy says, and all his channel is talk bad about other people. Exactly. And so yeah. their basis of fellowship is we don't like that guy, so we're all having fun talking about that guy. Yeah. That's horrible. Paul says, that made me cry when I when I know this is going to happen. Yeah. Therefore, watch. Remember, by the space of three years, I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. With tears, brother. Because I don't want to see you tearing each other down. He says, I want you all preaching the same thing. I commend you to God and the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. He said, I haven't co coveted any man's silver or gold. Exactly. And he continues there. It's more blessed to give than receive. Amen. Amen, brother. But it's That's the blood. That's what it is, is brother. Blood. So it's sad, but it is what the Bible says. And we preach a blood-stained gospel. Amen, my, brother. My dad told me that Peter Ruckman came up with the term the bloodless gospel. And in school, my dad remembered Ruckman would say, Watch out for these people preaching their bloodless gospel. Yep. And you don't hear that much. But at one time, Ruckman was straight on preaching what we preach because that's what the Bible teaches. And you can still find his videos where he says that, still find some stuff. But um, it's sad that people nowadays say it both ways. And it makes people wonder, oh, is it just what God did that I'm trusting in, or I got to trust in this too? A lot of people yeah. are messed up thinking, well, I got to do this, 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 and this. So I believe in Jesus and dot, dot, dot. Yeah. If you believe in Jesus and, then you're not saved. Exactly. You got to believe only in Christ crucified, what he did for you in your place. Amen. The whole council. So, Amen. I just don't feel up to doing any questions today. I'm sorry. So if you got anything else you want to do, go ahead. There's nothing, I mean, my personal opinion, there's nothing really more to ask. I mean, it's that simple, you know? It's literally that simple. Well, tell people how you got saved. That'd be a good place to go. Okay, well, I'll go ahead. Why, why am I looking at you? I can't. Okay. Are you? I know there's a way to get you up there. Oh, okay. But... Well, you got to, okay. Oh, I'm there now. All right. I was hoping to just put you. There we go. No. All right. Well, we'll just go with I, that. I be here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, basically, I was a Roman Catholic. Right. I don't want to make make it too long about me, but I was a Roman Catholic. And I remember, you know, as a Roman Catholic, I remember in, in, encountering this right here. This is really what started me on my journey. Right. I remember encountering this. Now, I didn't get saved off of this, you know, but what I will say is that this literally make me start to question what Roman Catholicism teaches. Right. And I'm thankful for this because this sort of start start boot started me on my journey. And I started doing some research on Ro Roman Catholicism teaching. What does the Bible say? And I started reading the Bible and I'm like, well, this contradicts the Catholic Church. And I was lost doing this, by the way. I was a lost man, but I'm trying to get uh, get saved, you know, so I'm OK. So 
And then some time passed by, I became a Calvinist. There's a long story there. But what I was trying to do is I was going through each plan of salvation in the Bible. So I encountered in Matthew 24, right, where it says, Whosoever shall endure unto the end shall be saved. I'm like, okay, well, I better start enduring. You know, in Matthew 25, for if you feed my brother, you have done it to me. You'll enter into the kingdom if you do that. So I'm there, you know, driving my car, and I see a homeless guy across the road. I'm like, well, I better give him something because I don't want to bust out. <laughs> so, and then the light turns green. I'm like, oh, no, the light turned green. And, dude, I lived in stress, bro. I was I was so stressed out and everything. I, I didn't know what salvation was, man. And I was going through each of the salvation plans, right? Hebrews 3, Hebrews 6, Hebrews 10. Oh, man, I, be I better endure, man. I better do it. I better do it. So I encountered all the different salvation plans in the Bible, and I still wasn't saved. But the moment I came across your video, Robert Breaker, and other Bible believers' videos, and you guys just preached the gospel, right? And then I sort of realized, wait a second. It's truly not of what I'm doing. Even if I do nothing after, it don't matter. It's truly not what I'm doing. But it's purely based on the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ, how he died for my sins. He shed his blood. He was buried and he rose again. That whole council, every, every single work that he did on the cross for me, it's truly that. And then there came a point when I said, you know what, Lord? I'm trusting in that now. I trust in the Lord. Lord, I trust in you and you alone. Your shed blood, Lord Jesus, how you died for my sins. I'm trusting in you alone, Lord, to save my soul. Everything. And that's the moment when the blood gave me peace. Because that payment that he did for me, the blood atonement, truly washed away my sins. I was confiding in that alone. And the moment I trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ, dude, I had a peace that passed all understanding. I couldn't explain it. I, I honestly couldn't explain it. It's like the Lord literally moved into me. I, I It's almost like I felt him move into me, man. Because I was like, it just changed me, man. And from then on, I went to sleep, sleep in peace. Because before that, I would go to sleep begging God. I would be praying, God, Lord Jesus, please save me. Lord Jesus, please save me. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. Lord, I, please, I ask him to save me. Lord, please save me. Please save me. Please save me. And I still wasn't saved. But there came a moment, a time, and a place when God made me realize that my works had nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. uh, my prayer, my sacraments, whatever, my endurance to prove that I'm truly the elect, the perseverance of the saints, whatever. It was purely, solely based on the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. The shed blood that he shed for me on Calvary. The moment I trusted in that, relied on that, rested on that, was persuaded of that, I got saved. And... And just recently, I visited a brother in Christ, and he has some pups on him, right? And he, he's recently had his dog give birth to, to a couple of pups. And that pup, I, I picked up that pup, and legit, I laid him on my chest. And, you know, he started playing around with my beard, and everything it was the best thing ever, right? But one thing I realized is that he was resting on me, right? He's without a care in the world, man. He's like a little thing resting on me. And he's literally yep. resting on my chest. That is literally what salvation is resting on the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. The yep. shed blood that he shed for you, man. Jesus. It truly was enough, right? That's yep. literally what salvation is. If that moment has never happened to you, where you have rested on the Lord Jesus Christ for the salvation of your soul, so you will not bust tail wide open, then you're not saved. That moment has to come when your complete reliance is purely in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if that moment has never happened to you, you're not converted. I don't care what anyone says. It has to be purely by faith. That's what we mean when we say believe in Jesus. It's not just believing right. in Jesus as, oh, he's the son of God. I mean, yes, that's part of it. Or believe in Jesus. Oh, he's just, he's God in the flesh. And it is true. You got to believe in that too. But what about Jesus being the son of God? What? That he became the propitiation for your sins. He made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He took your sin, past, present, and future, to the cross, and he paid for it with his blood. He shed his blood, and the Bible says if you simply trust in that act, how he died for your sins, buried, rose again, how he shed his blood for you, resting in that for your salvation, you're saved. It's purely that simple. And... Our kids even understand that. They get it. It's easy. You know? Yep.
And that's way, the way we get to heaven is we have boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Amen, brother. That's right, man. The, uh, the church one time, I'll just tell this story. This church one time where there was this young lady. And dad had me go to that church because he wanted me to marry this young lady. And I mm. didn't want to marry her, but I was like, well, if that's what the Lord wants. And my dad's pretty smart. Maybe this is a good girl. So I went to this church and we talked and I didn't really like her too much. But I went to Honduras as a single missionary and we would write back and forth for a little while, very short time, maybe a couple of weeks at the most. And the last email I got from her was, I just don't like you because you're so sure that you think you're saved. And you go around telling everybody, I don't know if I'm saved. So how how do you think you know? It's just, I, I think you're prideful. <laughs> she said I was being prideful in knowing that I was saved and on my way to heaven. And I just kind of shook my head and said, that's got to be a lost person. And I was just sad. And I just uh, wish that that she would, I don't know if she ever got saved. I hope she did. But that's there's a lot of people like that that don't know yeah. if they're saved. And if you come to the blood of Christ, then you can know because we can enter in through the blood to heaven. It's only through the blood. And here's for all those people who will still to this day say breakers a heretic. And this is the wrong message. Don't listen to him. <laughs> how much it says of how much more sore punishment suppose ye that he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite unto the spirit of grace. Mm-hmm. It says, vengeance is mine. Uh, and, you know, I will re- recompense, saith the Lord. It is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. So if you claim to be a preacher, if you claim to be a pastor, if you claim to be a soul winner, why are you leaving out the blood? The Bible says the life of the flesh is in the blood. Why would you leave out the life, the life's blood, when it's the blood it's the life of the gospel. It maketh the atonement for the soul. For it is the blood that makes the atonement. Leviticus 17, 11, right? Exactly. Amen. Yep. So I'm just sad that there's people out there that claim to be Christians. And sadder still that all they do is attack each other. <laughs> and I'm not getting involved in their attacks. I'm just going to double down and yeah. preach it even harder. Because every time I do, somebody gets saved and says, Wow, I finally understood. Thank you, Brother Breaker. But here's what they call it. They say, well, Breaker, you're just trying to get them to believe with their head. You just want them to um, make a mental assertion. that, Oh, well, I believe that now. We've already told you, no, it's from the heart with your entire being. What is your heart in the Bible? It's your soul. It's with all that you are. I trust in what he's done. Amen. Nothing of myself. They call it easy believism. Oh, that Breaker, he teaches easy believism. Well, we're saved when we believe. Yeah. And it's easy for us. It wasn't easy for Jesus, but for us. God made it very simple. Amen. Uh, and you know what the Bible calls it? Let me let me go to that verse because this is what the Bible calls it. Uh-oh, I hope I didn't close it. Yeah, the Bible calls it this. The Bible calls it the simplicity Amen. of the gospel. Yeah, let's go to 2 Corinthians 11.3. Paul says, would to God you could bear with me a little of my folly. Oops, I don't have it up there, do I? He says, for I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. What? We're the body of Christ? Yep. Yep. Yeah. It's a bride? Oh, yeah. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. So it is easy. To get saved it's simple it all comes through understanding and then believing but it's not enough to just say well just believe in jesus you've got to explain what that means in the bible in context is the the person amen you're trusting in what he some people say this brother fabriel and maybe they haven't thought about it but you can't say salvation is in a person and not in a thing <laughs> salvation is in jesus christ as a person yeah but the thing that he did is what saves oh, yeah. him. And the thing is his blood, which is his what? His Amen. life. Yes. So that's his life's blood. So yeah, it's it's the person, but it's also the blood that he shed. Yeah. And so, I guess it's just uh because I, I, I've said, you know, that you know it's a person, not a thing. And and what I meant by that was is that yes, it's the person, but it's also the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. And what it, I mean by thing is works that we do, you know. So 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, but you're you're right too. It, it is a person and a thing as well. So yeah, you're absolutely right. It just depends on how it's preached, you know. This is what I call the who versus what yeah. message. And a lot of people they read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and they don't go to Paul. And uh, see the last message that we did in Matthew chapter 28. I talk about that a little bit. A lot of people will tell you, just believe in Jesus, and then they'll say, believe in his name. Well, that was the early message to believe that yeah, Jesus yeah. was the Messiah. If we go preach that Jesus Christ is the Messiah of Israel, does that save anyone today? Oh, sir. That's the who message that will come back in the tribulation yeah. because that goes back to dealing with the Jews. They need to believe it. Yeah. But that's not the message of Paul. And Amen. the message of Paul is Acts. So I, I'm still... I don't know what why people say certain things. I guess people I've lately people said, Breaker, you're some sort of axe mid whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, dude, I'm just a Bible believer. And Ooh, you can't that, read Acts without seeing a transition. So if the transition's in the middle, fine. I don't care where all I know is this is what was revealed to Paul. And it points yeah. to justified. And Paul's message is you're justified by what? By his blood. That's oh, what he said in Romans. Yeah. He says, be it known, therefore, unto you, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. How do you get forgiveness of sins? You believe in Jesus. In what? In Amen. his sacrifice, what he did. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. It's yeah. not the works. It's trusting in the finished work of Christ. It's not what you do. It's what he did. Yeah. So I guess we'll stop there. You got any final words? Yeah, just, you know, basically when you're sitting down with someone, have some wisdom, you know, take take some, some time to consider where they're at already and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So you could have knowledge and still be lost, right? So, like, for example, a Muslim, if you talk to a Muslim guy, the first thing you want to mention to him, surprisingly, is not actually that Christ died for your sins. The first thing you want to mention to him is that Jesus is God, because that's the first thing they're going to reject. Jesus yeah. is God. Now, after you get them to that now. part that Jesus is God, then you tell them, okay, now this is what he did for you, mm -hmm. right? So it depends on the person who you're talking to. You got to know you, you got to know the culture. You got to know the person you're talking to. Like Hispanic people, especially Hispanic people, we Hispanic people, we love to tr to bring our works into it all the time, all the time. We'll play word games. We'll, we'll try to add, you know, oh, I'm a man of God, this and that, you know, but we'll, we'll, we'll do it in an instant, Jesus. you know, so. So you gotta, so you gotta bring the scripture to them in a way that, oh no, it's not a works. That's what you gotta bring. The first thing you gotta bring, it's not a works. It's not a works. It's not a works. It's not a works. Yes, it's the blood, but it's not a works. So it depends on the culture, right? Or if someone already knows it's not a works and he already knows that Jesus is God, then you gotta bring in. Okay, you gotta trust the blood of Christ. You gotta trust the blood of Christ. You gotta. Trust, so you gotta see where they're at. You know, try to discern. Okay, where are you at right now? What What are you trusting in? Where where are you at right now in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ? Because I'm not saying that we get saved by, oh, what we know, right? But we get saved by it, not also of what's in here, but we got to bring it down into our hearts, right. right? That's when salvation happens. So in no way are we saying that, oh, just believe the blood, like it's some mental ascent, right? We're not saying that. What we're saying is that you got to transfer that information that Jesus is God, that he died for you, buried and rose again, that he shed his blood, that he truly is the only way, that it's not of works or righteousness. you got to bring that knowledge down and confide in it. Rest. Rest rely. In it. Right? Rely so on the finished work of Christ. Amen. Show them the verses that you showed me that, that time that Which you were going to show tonight. Because so a lot of people want to know what verses should I use to win people to the Lord. These are the verses oh. you get. Man, I have that on my phone, man. Uh, here, you know what? Let me, you know what? Let me just bring up. So we'll here, see if it'll show up, do, right? So in here, I got my Roman reference Bible here. Um, so I don't know if you could see this, but in here, oh, yeah, go slowly, think. go slowly from top down, and maybe they'll be able to pause that. Okay, and make so it. in here, it, and on top is all my other notes on you know whatever you know the different studies but in here the lower one it says how to go to heaven right mm -hmm. so in here i got almost like five points our sin christ alone the gospel not of works and salvation happens in a moment time and a place and i got a bunch of bible references there and there's a reason why i have it all written out like that because i got if i'm talking to a person and he already knows he's a sinner then i skip that point i just go to christ alone if he already knows his christ alone then i go to a gospel or if he doesn't know anything then i start from the beginning you know what all i mean right. 
So, right. So, so people will look at that and go, Oh, you give them too much information. No. Do you think that's possible? Here's what I see. I hear people all the time. I got saved on this verse. I got saved on this verse. I got, it's that Holy spirit. And it might be a different verse for every person. Exactly. Amen. Why, the more you use the shotgun approach of all that going out, the, it's exactly. not just, I'm going to use one verse to win everybody to the Lord. You're not going to get it. No, you need to give as many like, verses. It's almost like fencing. So here I got this knife here when I went to the gun show with you, right? So yeah. when you're fencing, you're trying to pierce the guy, right? And you're aiming for the heart. Sometimes you'll miss and you'll hit the rib. Sometimes you'll miss, you hit the lung. But your, your, your objective, right, is the heart. So you're like, oh, I missed. Oh, I missed. I'm. Oh, I got him in the heart. I got him. He got it. He got it. He got it. You know, so sometimes it's like that. And each thrust is like a scripture reference. You got to go again and again. Hey, brother, John 3, 16. No, no, that didn't get it. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15. Well, no, that didn't get it. Romans 3, 25. No, that again. Oh, oh, this got it right here. He got it right here. He got it. He got it. He got it. You know, so that's how you got to be. It's almost like fencing. I remember there's a brother in Christ, uh, brother Chris. And I, I, I hope he's watching this, but Brother Chris, you know, he told me, I don't know if this is true or not, but I'm just trusting because he's a brother. You know what I mean? I love the guy. He told me that sermon, sermon, that's like a Latin or French word that literally means stab or thrust. Yeah. The thrust, right? And that's yeah. what you're doing, right? You're trying to thrust at heart, trying to get him, okay, where are you at, brother? Because sometimes they already know the blood atonement. They already know that, but they haven't believed yet that Jesus is God. And once you get that complete puzzle, you got him right there. Okay, now trust in that. Oh, you know, they trust in the whole process, and that's when salvation happens. Mm -hmm. You see, so it depends on the person you're talking to. So that's why you gotta have all those Bible references. That I mean, that's just me personally. You could do whatever you want. I'm not saying you gotta have those specifically, right? But what I'm saying is, is that you gotta have discernment and you got to have a whole arsenal right like I'm, I'm gonna mention like a superhero from marvel right the punisher the punisher he has a whole arsenal man he he knows how to deal with every single topic every single thing you know what i mean he has a whole arsenal same thing with the christian you want that whole arsenal you want every single cross reference there's a guy who might say well yeah i believe in that but i got a pure heart i know i got a pure heart I'll be like, let me show you something. You know, I don't know if you ever seen uh, Fire Marshal Bill I don't know, from SNL, whatever. But, you know, he he tells something and said, let me show you something. Well, I'm like this. Let me show you something. Jeremiah 17, right? The heart is deceitfully wicked. Who can know it, right? You know, so sometimes, depending on how the person is, you got to be discerning. Okay, no, that's wrong. That's wrong, brother. Your heart is deceitfully wicked. Let me show you something. You're wrong here. Salvation is by faith alone, you know, so. It depends mm -hmm. on the person you're talking to, and it just you got to be discerning. So that's why there had, mm -hmm. needs to be communication. What's the saying, Brother Breaker? You say with something about community. Your father used to say something about communication. There's nothing like communication or something. There's simply no that? substitute for clear and effective communication. Exactly. There's yep. no substitute for that. I mean, there's no substitute for clear uh, and effective communication. Find out where the person is at, you know. Because maybe they have believed that Jesus is God. They they have had that moment, time, and the place, right, where they believe Jesus was God, but they've never trusted from the heart in the blood atonement. Right. In that case, I'm like, brother, that's not salvation. You need to get saved. Yeah. So it depends on who you're dealing with, right? So, yeah, man, it's really, it's really that simple, brother. Right. And our kids well, get it. Your channel is KJB Believers. Yes, sir. And KJB yeah. Believers. It's, it should be. And in, you're in, now doing the Spanish church there in your church in Orlando, Florida. Yes. And, yes. Uh, so, habla español, ¿verdad? Sí, señor. Hablo español. Mi español no un poquito malo. My Spanish is a big, a bit, bit bad. And sometimes have have some brothers who speak Spanish are like, Fabro, you said the wrong word in Spanish. I'm like, perdona, mi hermano, porque no hablo mucho español. Perdona. <laughs> Forgive me, brother. I don't speak too much okay. Spanish. Forgive me. I'm an American, you know. <laughs> well, there's a lot more we could say, but I think we need to stop there. I'm exhausted. Oh, yeah. But if you're yeah, not brother. saved, please get saved. If you are saved, yeah. a lot of people in the comments are just like, I just want the rapture to come and get out of here. And yes, that's okay to want that because we love the Lord. But maybe your thinking should be, I just want to take some people with me. So I want to go and win people yeah. to Jesus. And uh, we need to make sure we do that. So we may or may not do one next week. We'll see how it goes. Amen. Um, pray for me. I've got to preach in Oklahoma here in a couple of yeah. weeks. I'm doing a King James Bible conference. So pray for that. Amen. Amen. And sorry we didn't get to any uh, questions today, but I'm just exhausted. So thank you for watching, everybody. And if you come across these videos of these people that attack us for preaching this, do not attack them back. 
just leave the Bible verse and let the Holy Spirit of God prick their hearts. Exactly. And, um, they just, you cannot argue with the Bible. Amen. So don't give your opinion or your words. Just say the Bible says, boom, and just leave them. And either they'll accept the word of God or they won't. And if they don't, then they'll go to the judgment and give account to God for what? Trotting underfoot the blood of Jesus, you know? So, all right. Uh, thank you all for coming. We'll see you next time. Hey, there's Amilcar. Hey, Amilcar. And everybody that was here, thank you for being with us. We'll see you next time. Amen. See you guys. All right.